All right, so let's look at axisymmetric elements. So these are used in special cases of 3D problems where ge uh, the geometry and loading are symmetrical about an axis. So typically the axis of symmetry is the z-axis and all the elements are rotated around it. So in this case, we got an axis of symmetry right here along the z. And if everything else is symmetric, the forces on this are symmetric, then the force applied to this element here and or here will be the same. And for the triangular element there and here will be the same. So we can just look at this case right here instead of looking at this as well. And then basically it minimizes the amount of computational time and expense it costs us if we can just look at this one side over here. All right. So because of this symmetry, we can use 2D elements instead of uh, 3D elements. It is a 3D problem, right? It's, a, it's got some uh, thickness to it. Uh, we're going to examine two types of 2D axisymmetric elements. We've got the triangular and the rectangular. So let's look at those. So if we look, remember the, uh, and you can go back to this as well, but uh, the, re the general solution for a linear triangular element and its associated shape function. So this is the one where 1 over 2 times the area of the triangle uh, times that alpha, beta, and delta, which is just cleaning things up. So that's the overall form there. So typically with axis symmetric triangular elements, we're going to just use R, the radius, and Z coordinates. Right? So we're, we just need to convert our shape functions from X and Y to the R and Z coordinates. Right? So let's do that conversion here. You can see here, so um, we've got kind of here's our R going out here, here's our Z. All right? So we're going to have R's going this direction, so essentially where our X was before and Z where our Y was before. So XI will go to R at node I, and Y at node I will be now Z of node I. And we'll do that for node J as well as node K. All right? Pretty simple conversion. All right, so our shape function is, again, the same structure here as, um, for the shape function, except we have, uh, instead of x, we have r there, and instead of y, we have z all right, for each one of these. And alpha and beta and delta all change to, instead of having x and y, there's now r and z as we go through here. And these are all in terms of z, and these are all in terms of r. All right, so pretty straightforward conversion there. So for the rectangular elements, all right, we have these basic uh, matrix setup for uh, the psi term. And the shape functions are as shown here that we have, again, the local coordinates there. So we just need to convert those over to our radius and z form. So now we got here radius and z, r and z. And it's going to replace r, x, and y that we have there. All right, so the conversion here is a little bit more involved, so we don't go straight. We go from uh, the local form of the radius to our global radius coordinate plus the original x local form co coordinate. Um, that converts over to, if we want to just replace for x in all our equations, so x is equal to the local radius minus the uh, global radius to node i. Right, and we also have the length change, so the length is the difference between um, the arc coordinate at node i and node j, and the width is the difference between the coordinates for z at node i and n. So substitute those into the 2D linear rectangular shape functions, and we obtain the axisymmetric rectangular shape functions. All right. So for axisymmetric rectangular elements, our shape functions become right here. So again, pretty much the same form, a lot of substitution for r and x as would be expected. All right, so let's run this as an example. Uh, we got uh, the overall coordinate system here of r and z, uh, nodes i, j, m, and n. We got temperatures defined at the coordinates there, at the nodes. Uh, we got the locations here. So we want to find the temperature right, at r equal to 3.5. So we got r equal to 2. So 7 minus 2 is 5, so we want to do 3.5, so right in here for R, Z is equal to 3. Alright, so 3, so 1, 4, 1 minus 4 is 3. 
right, so we go somewhere up in here. So we want to find the temperature right, right around this area right here. All right, so let's see what we can, how we do this. So there's our uh, setup here. So if we solve this equation, so this is just a, a series of uh, simultaneous equations. Uh, we need the shape function node i, so that's um, the global coordinate to node j minus the r coordinate of the point we want to find times the z coordinate to node n minus the z location of the uh, coordinate we want to find. So the length along the bottom here is 5, so we got that in there. The width was 3, so both those, these are all inches. Um, the radial location to r is 7 inches. Uh, the r that we said for the location we want to find was 3.5. Uh, z location to node n is 4 inches, and the z of the point we want to find is 3 inches. So solving that, we get 0.233. We do the same for node j. For node m, and the shape function for node n. All right, so we're going to plug those back in and solve for our temperatures. So there's the uh, shape value for the shape function we just saw for on the previous slide. Uh, here are all the temperatures that we know from the nodes from the initial uh, problem statement. And so if we just do the matrix math here, we're going to take this row and multiply it by this column. So 0.233 times 50 plus 0.1 times 40, et cetera, et cetera. So here we go. So we got 0.233 times 50 plus 0.1 times 40, et cetera, for the last two terms there. Add them up. Then we get 59.3 degrees Fahrenheit, excuse me, for the temperature at that particular location within our element. All right, so hopefully that's okay, yeah, pretty straightforward. It's stuff we did with a one-dimensional case. It's just moved on to the second dimension here. All right, so uh, isoparametric elements, not a whole lot to say here uh, besides stuff that we've already covered. Um, we have U, uh, capital U, describes the nodal displacements in the global coordinates. And our lowercase uv describes displacements within the element, so local coordinates, uh, in the x and y directions respectively. So uh, if we look at the local uh, position of, or local displacement in this case, within the element, we can use that based on the shape functions and our global locations at each element. Right. So if we recall from before, when we use a single set of parameters, uh, your shape functions, uh, to define unknown variables, so we define mainly temperature in this example because we're looking at a, at a fin, but we could also do displacement as well as velocity and for our psi. Um, and if we can use a single set of parameters to express the geometry, then we are using an isoparametric formulation. All right, so hence these types of elements are called isoparametric elements. And you can see we talked about this before in a previous presentation, get some more information on that. But again, because it can extend to multiple things, uh, it's iso, it's constant for the parameter. Um, so we can use these again and again. So that's the big value of shape functions. So we can develop them once and use them for multiple uh, different uh, different uh, occasions and applications. All right, so here are the overall elements developed. I know this is kind of small, but um, kind of a nice summary of all the shape functions here for a linear rectangular uh, element here. All right, so you got both local coordinates and uh, natural coordinates, uh, quadratic, quadrilateral, so all natural coordinates for all eight nodes. Uh, linear rectangular, so you got your shape functions in node i, j, and k, and quadratic triangular, so all those in natural coordinates. All right, so in matrix form, what that um, these local uh, displacement forms would come out to, we got shape function node i would be multiplied times the displacement um, at node i in the x direction, because this u is in the x direction. And then we'd have to do on the separate line here the displacement in the um, v's, the displacement in the y direction uh, locally would be based on the uh, displacement um, at node i in the y direction. So we can use the uh, natural coordinate shape function developed previously to substitute in here to the, for the shape functions. And they can also be used to describe the position of any point within the element. Right? This seems like it would make pretty good sense of what the, how that would 
uh, be done. But instead of doing it based on the state function, you use it based on natural uh, coordinates or global coordinates, and then you could get them based on a, a local coordinate basis uh, within each element. All right, so again, for 2D elements and ANSYS, uh, probably the thing that's going to give you the most uh, information, go to ANSYS Help, and you can search for uh, the different elements that you're interested in using. Uh, same for 3D elements as well. Uh, you can also look at the notes. The notes will have some information about some of the elements that they use in ANSYS and, and how they're used, um, um, how many nodes they have. Um, there's one specifically for structurals, one specifically for thermal. Um, so I'll let you look at those in the, in the notes. Again, if you have any questions, put them in the comments below and uh, hope to see you at the next presentation. Thanks.